Alright, in this video we are going to talk about operations that we can do with vectors. Specifically, we're going to talk about how we can add, subtract, and scale vectors. So these are three of the operations we're going to want to do. There are some other operations we're going to learn about, but these are the first ones we're going to start with. So, as a note before I get going, we are going to use three dimensions here in this video, but the same rules apply for n-dimensional vectors, so things in Rn. We're going to do R3, and it'll be pretty easy to see how these translate to R2. You just do one fewer component, so just the x and the y. But I just want to mention that all of these things extend to n-dimensional systems. Okay. So as we talk about addition, subtraction, and scaling, I'm going to use the vectors a, which is x1, y1, and z1, and the vector b, which is x2, y2, and z2. So the first thing we're going to do is work on addition. So we'd like to be able to add two vectors together, and this works just the way you'd hope it would. So we do the first vector a, x1, y1, z1, and we add it to the second vector b, x2, y2, z2. Then the way we define this is that we add the x components, x1 plus x2, and that becomes our new x component. Then we add the y components, y1 plus y2, this becomes the new y component, and then z1 plus z2 becomes the new z component. So this should make sense just thinking about vectors in terms of movement. So when we add two vectors, it's like we're doing both the A movement and the B movement. And the total movement would be all of the X movement, so X1 plus X2, and then all of the Y movement, Y1 plus Y2, and all of the Z movement, Z1 plus Z2. So this is as simple as adding the components. You can just think that addition works the way you'd want it to add the x's, the y's, and the z's, and make those the new components. So this is the algebraic way of writing out vector addition, but I want to show you how it looks geometrically as well. So let's suppose we have this vector a and this other vector b. I'm just drawing them as some arbitrary vectors. They could be pointing other directions, have different magnitudes. We're just going to talk about what this looks like in general. Now, to add these, we're going to think of doing the A movement and then the B movement. So we're going to place the vectors tip to tail. So we do A, then we do B. So the tail of A, the end of A, is going to match up with the tip, the beginning of B. Then what we can do is start at the initial point of A and end at the terminal point of B. And this new vector is A plus B. And again, to write this out formally, the sum of the vectors begins at the initial point of A and ends at the terminal point of B. Just remember that we go tip to tail with the vectors. All right, so before we get to subtraction, I want to do scaling. So scaling of a vector means to stretch, shrink, or reverse its direction. So let's say we have alpha which is some constant, and we're going to scale our vector a by alpha. So this looks like alpha times a, where a is our vector. So when we write it out, we have alpha times x1, y1, z1. And what we do is we just distribute that alpha into each of the components. So we do alpha times x1, alpha times y1, and alpha times z1. So each of the components gets stretched by alpha, or shrunk by alpha, or maybe reversed by alpha. So how do we know what happens? If the absolute value of our alpha is between 0 and 1, so this is some number between negative 1 and 1, then alpha shrinks the vector. You can think that it shortens it. So we're taking each of the components and somehow making it smaller by a factor of alpha, since alpha is between negative 1 and 1. When we multiply, it gets smaller. Then, if the absolute value of alpha is greater than 1, then alpha is going to stretch the vector. You can also think of it as lengthening it. So you can imagine if alpha is some number larger than one, 
we're taking all of the components and making them into a bigger number, and so the vector is now longer. Lastly, if we have alpha that is also a negative value, so if it's a negative, then alpha is going to reverse the direction of the vector. This is because we're taking that negative value and multiplying it by each of the components. So now the direction on the x, y, and z is changing. Okay, let's talk about what this looks like geometrically. If I have a vector a, I'll draw it here, then we can consider an alpha value that's in that first case. So let's say alpha is 1 half then one half of a is just going to make our vector half the length. So we have a new vector that's half the length since the x, y, and z components all got multiplied by one half. For the second case, let's consider when alpha would be two. So two times the vector a is going to stretch the vector by two. Each of the components gets multiplied by two, and so the vector is twice the length. Then when we have alpha is negative one for that third case, the negative just means that the components all are switched direction. So we're now going the same vector, but in the opposite direction. So this is just negative a. It's just nice to have a geometric understanding of what the alpha or the constant that we're scaling by is doing to our vector. And this is a good way to remember it. Now with this in mind, let's talk about subtraction. So when we're considering the vector a minus the vector b, I actually want to think about this as the vector a plus the negative b vector. So we know how addition works, so we can just think of the vector a added to the vector negative b. So I'm going to write out what this looks like algebraically, and then we'll talk about it geometrically. So we would have x1, y1, z1, that's our a vector, and we're going to add it to a negative 1 times x2, y2, z2. That's the negative b. Doing this, I'm distributing that negative into the b vector. So I have negative x2, negative y2, and negative z2. And now addition just tells me that I combine the components. So I combine the x components, I add them together. I'm getting x1 plus a negative x2. That's just x1 minus x2. And we repeat it for the other components. So I'm getting y1 minus y2 and z1 minus z2. So all this to say, subtraction does what you think it would. You subtract the components here. So let's look at this geometrically using our understanding of addition. So if the vector a minus the vector b is the same as adding the vectors a and negative b, we're going to look at those same vectors from when we were talking about adding, but now I'm going to reverse the direction of b. So now I have negative b, and I'm going to put a and negative b tip to tail. I'm going to add them geometrically. So I do a first, then I do negative b, and the resulting vector where I start from the initial part of a and end at the terminal part of b is our new vector a minus b. So it starts at the beginning of a and ends at the end of negative b. Okay, so this was just meant to show you how vectors work both algebraically and geometrically, and that we can do these operations both ways. In the long run, it's often difficult to graph things, especially in three dimensions. So having the algebraic way to solve these problems is going to be really useful to us and help us do lots of powerful things. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.